My name is Carlos, and this is how I seasoned my 28-inch Blackstone griddle. This is the cover we bought for it, too. I bought the 28-inch because I only had about four feet of space on my patio where I wanted it to go. Many people say, go big or go home, and buy the 36-inch, but this was a big enough increase over the 17-inch I bought for portable use. The griddle space is actually nearly 29 inches wide. I only have a family of three, so this is plenty for us. If you have a reason to buy the biggest Blackstone available, like you have a larger family or entertain a lot, then by all means buy the largest. When I received the grill, I was actually impressed with how it looked, nice and dark and pre-seasoned. The instruction manual says to heat it up to burn off the oil, but I didn't go that route, I wanted to sand it off instead. You see, by touching the surface, I could feel the imperfections, the unevenness. A rough surface like this can't be non-stick. So what people do is they fill it with burnt oil and try to even it out. But it makes a lot more sense to just sand it down and make it smooth to begin with. I used medium grit drywall sanding screens and a package of 80 grit, 120 grit, and 220 grit that I got with this sanding block. You also might want to use some disposable cloth-like rags like this to wipe up any dust and wear a dust mask to prevent inhaling any of it. With these supplies and a good work surface, it was time to start with the drywall sanding screens. When you finish the step, you'll end up with this black metal powder that you'll want to wipe away. Next is using the 80 grit sandpaper. and you'll want to make sure you sand the sides as well. After that is the 120 grit sandpaper. Try to listen for the difference in tone of what we're sanding off. And lastly, the 220 grit sandpaper. At this point, you can feel a significant difference in the surface, and if you look closely, all those little peaks and valleys have been evened out and, for now, filled in with some dust, so you'll want to clean that out. Your finished product should look something like this, nice and silver and smooth. My next step was seasoning, so fortunately I have an outside grill that my 28-inch griddle is going to fit perfectly inside. I used the recommended Blackstone conditioner and seasoning because at a nice warm temperature, like in the sun, it spreads on very nice and smooth and you can apply a very thin layer. I'm going to make sure to do it to the back and, of course, the griddle surface itself. It goes without saying that you should work hard to get all the crevices and corners and edges and sides and every single surface that's going to get heated up and that you want to get seasoned. After the gas grill was nice and hot, it was time to put in the griddle. I started with the bottom side down to cure that first and then flipped it over to start curing the griddle surface. This is what it looked like after it came out of the grill the first time. Note that taking it out of the grill and letting it cool down is part of the curing process. It helps the oil polymerize and bond with the metal. Then it was time to apply another layer of Blackstone conditioner using the same oily rag. Nice thin layers. I think I did this process four times to end up with a decent all-around bronze look. Looking closely, we can see how the metal has changed color and all those much shallower divots have been filled in. This isn't perfect yet, this is just a start. Proper seasoning is a molecular bond, polymer between the oil and the metal. My first cook was smash burgers, and afterwards the patties left circular marks on the surface. I read about someone who sanded their grill further with 800 grit sandpaper and number 0000 steel wool, so I decided to put some elbow grease into it again and refinished it. 
this is the 220 grit sandpaper so just because you started cooking on it doesn't mean you can't work to keep the surface clean and this is the 800 grit sandpaper used it dry just to continue smoothing it out getting rid of any patterns and overall it evens out the color remember to keep wiping up you'll be impressed to see how much additional metal you can pull off after the 800 grit was the steel wool. When that's done, I don't know if this is any indication, but it was fun to see exactly how slippery the surface was. Now that we're finished, you could also use some water to wipe up any residue left over from your sanding efforts. And then you can always apply some more blackstone conditioner. I read somewhere that potatoes were a good first cook, so here I am wiping just enough oil onto the surface to begin cooking. As nice and non-stick as it is, it's easy to spread the potatoes around and try to use them to also season the surface. Finally, I also want to demonstrate cleaning up. You want to scrape off any leftover food. There's no reason to allow any kind of buildup on this kind of surface. When the griddle's cooled down enough, you can use a rag to also wipe off any leftover oil and food residue. Then get a clean rag and wipe off anything else. All you want to end up with is a surface that's nice and oily. Because this was my first cook again, I wanted to be thorough and scrape off any leftover food with a chainmail scrubber. In the end, I believe I have a griddle that is going to act more like a properly seasoned cast iron pan instead of a metal surface which is essentially painted for protection. Can you scrape off your seasoning? If so, that's not seasoning, that's food. Seasoning is polymerized oil that is bonded at the molecular level with the metal. It can't be scraped off and it can't be rushed. It just gets better with time if properly maintained. This is seasoning. There's nothing there. Just seasoned metal. So on that note, I'll end this video and make others to explain how I use the griddle and importantly how I keep it clean and maintain it afterwards. Thanks for your interest in keeping your griddle slick and silver.